Welcome back to Your Regina 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy. We've covered quite a few uh, logical fallacies so far in this series, so if you haven't seen any of the other videos, uh, it may be worth checking some of them out, uh, just to get a, a feel for what other uh, logical fallacies are like, what the standard forms of arguments are, etc., etc. Uh, this one is going to be the four-term fallacy. Uh, and so, uh, or in Latin, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, quaternio terminorum, uh, something like that, anyway. Uh, and so this is going to uh, basically state a general rule, uh, which is that all categorical syllogisms, or, or all uh, kind of standard classical arguments, uh, should have three terms. Now, of course, what do I mean when I say three terms? Let's go back and look at an example of an argument. this pen holds up for us here, uh, but the, so an example argument would be all x's are y's, all y's are z's, therefore all x's are z's. Now this is going to have uh, a couple of quantifiers, we could replace these alls. Something like that. Uh, and then it, there's going to be uh, terms that these operator quantifiers operate on. So this is just the, the variable here, x, uh, y, and z. Those are going to be the terms. And of course, just as some basic review, this first whole line is the first premise. So it states it state something true or false uh, that is used in this argument to make this conclusion. This is another premise. And this is a conclusion, this last part. And the conclusion is supported by the two premises. If the premises being true causes the, the conclusion to be true, then it is a valid argument, i.e. an invalid argument is just one where if both premises are true, the conclusion may be false. So in this particular case, uh, what it means to, or what the four, or four terms fallacy means is that there are four separate kinds of terms in the argument. In this case, we have three separate kinds of terms, which means this is probably a valid argument. Uh, we have x, y, and z. So how a fourth term would look uh, is, let's say we replace this y with a. So now we have, if x's are y's, if a's are z's, therefore, x's are z's. Of course, that isn't the case. There is no connection between z and x now that we've kind of replaced the y here, uh, so it's no longer a valid argument. This is an example of a four-term argument, which is, of course, not valid. Now, it should be worth noting that most of the time we don't really argument in arguments so simple, or don't use arguments that are so simple that they only have two premises. Sometimes you can, have, you can build an argument using a whole list of premises or a whole list of steps uh, and then have a conclusion at the very end. But the important thing to note is, while this is okay, uh, it's only okay if you can kind of break down that larger argument uh, so that every, or every, every two premises uh, can lead to a conclusion and the entire argument can be kind of subdivided into arguments of this form. So let's take a look. We have something like that. We have four uh, premises. We have one temporary conclusion from the first two, say. One temporary conclusion from the first temporary conclusion of the third premise. One temporary conclusion from the uh, fourth premise and the second temporary conclusion. And then that would be the final conclusion. 
So that would just be an example of how you could break down a comp more complicated argument into arguments of this form. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is that you have to make sure that none of these steps induce or cause or is, is affected by this four term fallacy. If you do run into that, then of course the whole argument is invalid, no matter how, I guess, promising it looks. As other logical fallacies, this is related to uh, some of the other videos we've talked about. Uh, specifically, the first example is the Euthydemus video. Uh, so, for example, uh, if your uh, your 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 and, and, and this the reason that this is effective is that. So th this is the, although well, it is kind of hard to see uh, with this dying pen here, uh, this is the argument from Euthydemus. So do you beat your father? This has two terms in it, uh, which is the action is one of the terms. So beat and dog is the other kind of affected thing. And then the next step is is your dog, now we've already seen this dog, so it's not another term, it's another instance of a term in the argument that already exists. So it, 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 it's basically not an additional one for our purposes here. Uh, our terms so far are uh, beat, as in an action that you're doing, dog, and your father, or sorry, a father. And in the last part, you know, you beat it's the same kind of beat. Uh, your father. Uh, so your father is a, another kind of term. And this brings up an in, uh, important point, in that sometimes language deceives us in terms of what is and is not a term when the argument is actually clearly stated. In this case, there are two terms with the same word associated with them, the word being father, even though there are two senses in which the word is used. And the humor of the matter comes out by the confusion of these two meanings of the word father. Uh, and so if, you know, do you beat your dog? Uh, you know, is your dog a father? Therefore, you beat your dog. Um, or, or you beat your, uh, your dog, rather. Uh, is, uh, it, it is an instance of this four-term fallacy. And it's not the only one we've talked about so far. Uh, Politician syllogism is another example of the four-term fallacy. We must do something contains two terms. We must, or, or the kind of imperative for action, something is another term. This is a third term, is something. Uh, now note, again, the, the meaning of the word something is different from the first meaning. So we actually have already in the argument four terms. We don't even have to wait till the conclusion to see it. Uh, it doesn't matter what the conclusion is because again, it's invalid. There's only two, two premises here. They cannot be used to create a third premise. And the, the first two premises have four terms. So it's an invalid argument. There are other examples of this uh, and the, the more you kind of look into it, the more kind of wordplay is involved. Uh, but another example from Wikipedia is the pen touches the paper, the hand touches the pen, therefore the hand touches the paper. Of course, if we have something like this, you'll notice my 
right hand here is not in fact touching the paper. There is a pen in the way. Uh, so the, the, I, the word touch or the concept of touching is not transitive in quite the right way to make that argument work. Uh, and so because that doesn't work that way, uh, it's actually a four-term fallacy because when I say that the pen touches the paper, I mean something different from when the hand touches the pen. The meaning of touch differs in those two cases, and this is different from here. In this case, the terms itself had the word that was being shared. In this case, the terms are different, uh, or, or rather the term uh, is a kind of combina combination of the noun, or the, the, the thing being affected, and the action that it's being affected by. And so you have to kind of watch out that even if the you have the, the right nouns involved, that the actions have to be kind of uh, separated in the right way. Then there's uh, kind of differences in what, or, or, or cutting the, 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 the difference in the, the wrong place. So for example, uh, no Republicans are Democrats, which is true. Uh, all Conservatives are Republicans, which is probably true. Therefore, no Conservatives are Democrats. This, again, uh, we have, what are our four terms here? We have Republicans, Democrats, Conservatives. Now, it's, it's, it's kind of split up in such a way that when we talk about uh, what a Republican is, there's actually two meanings when in use in this argument, similar to this argument, uh, where the, the idea of a Republican is something that you can't be both a Democrat and a Republican. That's one way of looking at it. And then another is kind of in a more general way, where uh, you know all, all conservatives are, are Republicans. Okay, well, that, that's also true. But uh, it's true in a way that is less tied to what the Democrat Party is than the first instance, of, or the first use so again, it's, it's using four separate terms, four separate concepts uh, in a two premise, one conclusion argument doesn't work. Even though the conclusion may be true, and sometimes we're tempted to believe that an argument is valid if we suspect that the conclusion is true, even if the argument is not valid. The important thing to, to learn, or one of the most important things to learn from this whole series on logical fallacies is that even on things that you believe, you have to be able to argue for them correctly because sometimes people will disagree on certain uh, things with you and it may be worth convincing them that they are incorrect but you won't be able to do that unless you're able to form valid arguments and to bring them to the you know closer to the truth uh, and so if you don't do this they'll be kind of left in ignorance continually uh, kind of getting in your way when you try to act on your uh, informed belief and so on and so forth Another example, quote, a poor lesson is better than a good lesson because a good lesson is better than nothing and nothing is better than a good lesson. Now notice first of all that the conclusion happened first. So even when we're reading things, we don't have to necessarily look to the bottom. That's just purely a convention on the part of Western philosophers that they put the conclusions at the bottom. It could just easily, or just as easily have been that we put the conclusion at the top and then kind of justify it. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. As long as everybody knows or you can figure out what part is the conclusion and what part is the part that's supporting the conclusion, that's the important part. So let's take a look at this in a little bit closer way. So a poor lesson is better than nothing. And nothing is better than a good lesson. So again, we have, we have four potential terms. Now, is the, the, the sense that nothing is being used by a poor lesson is better than nothing the same as nothing is better than a good lesson? No, they, 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 there's a different uh, meaning, again, in the word of nothing, uh, so that a poor lesson is better than nothing uh, means it, it's purely expressing a quality of a poor lesson. And when you say nothing is better than a good lesson, you're, you're basically saying the absence of something uh, better than a, a certain other thing. So again, there's, there's four terms here. It's kind of hard to, and, and this is another good, good point here, which is that sometimes it's hard to notice that there are these multiple meanings. And we may see multiple meanings when there aren't multiple meanings. And in general, this is going to be a hard thing in practice to con A, convince other people that it's actually happening and B, kind of to see it yourself. Because if I were to read that, I probably, you know, 
be stuck on it. It would seem kind of funny, but I wouldn't know what's wrong with it. And this is exactly what it is. Uh, they can be funny. Uh, quote, all rivers have banks. All banks have vaults. Therefore, all rivers have vaults. Well, obviously, all rivers don't have vaults. Uh, but again, th this is just an example of how the, the kind of setting up of expectations is broken uh, by this fallacy because the part of your mind that kind of interprets these arguments uh, can kind of do the, 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 the manipulation of them uh, in order to kind of understand them, but when it sees the conclusion, it sees that something's obviously wrong, and you kind of get that you know, funny reaction where you laugh, you, you know, uh, you, you notice something is, is, is funny, uh, but even if you can't tell what. So one, one question you could ask is why, why four terms? Why don't we have a five term fallacy or a six terms fallacy? And that is because, not because it wouldn't be a, a logical fallacy, not because it wouldn't be wrong to have five terms in an argument, it's that uh, five and six term uh, arguments tend to actually be recognizable as completely wrong, even by people who have never taken a logic course or have never watched this video or have never been introduced to the idea of you know, syllogisms and arguments and uh, valid arguments and so on. Uh, if you have five or six terms in your argument, people will just not believe you in general. Sometimes you might be able to get away with it, uh, especially like, on the occasional math question there'll be a, a, an argument like this with five terms just to completely throw people off, usually for humor's uh, sake. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's not so much that it would not be wrong, so much it would be so obviously wrong, you would always see it. Whereas the four terms, sometimes it looks close enough that it could actually be true. And those are the dangerous ones, because you want to make sure that, you know, if, if you're going to make a mistake, uh, or, or you could make a mistake, that it's obvious when you did make that mistake, uh, rather than it be very subtle, uh, so that you can't correct it. Here's another example. Quote, knowledge is power, power is energy, energy is matter, matter is mass, mass warps space-time. Therefore, libraries warp space-time, and you could probably make a black hole by warping space-time with the amount of knowledge in a library. Of course, this uses more than one premise uh, in a uh, kind of, or yeah, sorry, more than two premises in its argument. It's got, what, five? Uh, but even so, if you break each part down, every single step is committing this fallacy. And so the kind of, uh, I mean, one use of this fallacy is enough to, to generate absurd conclusions, but in this case, it gets even more and more absurd as you go, and of course, funnier and funnier as you go as well. Uh, and then kind of one last example, uh, which is the Smashing Pumpkins lyrics, quote, emptiness is loneliness, and loneliness is cleanliness, and cleanliness is godliness, and God is empty just like me. Of course, the last part is the conclusion in this part, uh, but again, if you break this into its components, you'll notice that there's four term fallacies occurring in every single step. Uh, so again, it's, it's something that you can you know, uh, kind of agree with if you're not really paying attention, and you can kind of justify your perception of yourself based on this, again, only if you commit this fallacy. So um, as usual, if you have any uh, questions or would like more examples of these, because they're, they're out there, um, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. As you can see, our, our whiteboard marker here is slowly dying, so we could use some Bitcoin donations if you uh, want to donate here. Uh, and uh, as usual, this is a video for your benefit. So I uh, uh, hope you enjoy. I will see you next video.